Okay, we're holding chapter seven. Yeah? yeah. We're holding chapter seven, Isaiah in the Maimur Vela Mishpatun Tafshim Amalev. So we said that um, we started to explain this idea of Ve'ela Mishpatim Ashatasim Lifneim, Kisikne Eved Ivri. We asked a number of questions. We've been already answering them as we've been moving along. Um, but first we said that Ve'ela Mishpatim Ashatasim Lifneim, Kisikne. That Ve'ela Mishpatim Ashatasim Lifneim, so as Chazal say, Tasim Lifneim, place it before them means that it's Tamam Yashiv Talmudim, that they have to understand it. You have to teach it to your students that they understand. They learn Torah and they understand it thoroughly and very well. Uh, meaning that they understand not just they know the bottom line, but they also know the reasons behind it. And we explain that that's the, the, how the Pasa continues with Kisikna, that the idea of Kisikna means that they own it, they take ownership over it. We quoted the idea of Torah Delehi, thank you. Torah Delehi, that the Torah becomes his, that the Yid, when he studies Torah and understands it thoroughly, the Torah becomes his. We quoted from the Chida, even the Halacha, that when a person learns Torah, even if he knows all the Halachas, he knows it very well. But he doesn't know the reason behind it, so you can't call it Torah delay, you can't call it his Torah, and therefore he can't forgive his honor because it's not his. He doesn't have ownership over, the, over his Torah knowledge, and so therefore it's not his honor to forego. Um, but if he understands the reasoning behind it, so then it, it becomes his. He takes ownership, and therefore he has the authority even to forego his, the honor due to him on account of his Torah knowledge. The problem, though, was that that, it's a very nice pshat, but it doesn't really fit in the literal understanding of the Pasuk. The Pasuk is Vela Mashbat Mashadasim Lifneim, period. That's the end of the Pasuk. And then starts a new thing. What do you have to teach them? Kisikna Avedivri. That's Kisikna starts a new thing, the idea of acquiring an Avedivri. So there it explains that what we're saying is like this. The Eila Mashbat Mashadasim Lifneim teach them thoroughly to the extent that it becomes theirs. They take ownership over it. And then, even though they understand it, and it becomes so, it becomes so uh, one with them, Right? becomes so part of who they are that they, you can say that they own it. Nevertheless, a, a student has to remember that kisikna, that Torah is really an atzilis, that the Torah is really beyond his comprehension. Right? So you have two things, two, two, two things. So it comes out it's like the opposite interpretation. First we said, tasim of name kisikna are one thing. Just a further elaboration on how you have to understand it. Now we're saying they're actually opposites. Tasim of name means understand and take ownership over it. And kisikna is know that it's beyond you. Like the exact opposite. But what's the point here? How do, how do we get... What the point is that a person has to recognize that how is it that he, under, that he has the ability to understand Torah? He understands Torah because the Eibishter is not limited to... The Torah is not confined and limited to being beyond human intellect. Right? And that's how we explain also this idea of... Just simple meaning in the Pasuk. What does it mean that the Torah starts as Hashem's Torah and then it ends as the person's Torah? Isn't that a Yerida? Isn't that a descent for the Torah? So we explain, no, the opposite. When Torah is just Torah, it's beyond human comprehension. So Torah is limited to heaven. But when a person understands it, so then the Torah, then we, then we reveal the higher aspect of Torah. Not that the Torah is lowered, is sort of dumbed down to, for, for human intellect, but to the contrary, that the Torah is beyond even being limited to infinity, beyond even being limited to, to, to the higher realms. And so when a person understands Torah, that reveals the true essence of Torah, which is that it's Torah as it's beyond even Torah Savayid, as it's in the essence of Hashem. That's how these two can coexist, right? That you have on the one hand, you understand Torah thoroughly, and on the other hand, you recognize that it's kisikna, it's kinyin, it's, it's atzilus, it's beyond, beyond comprehension. What's the result of studying Torah in that fashion? Bittel. When a person studies Torah in this way, so he doesn't become, he doesn't get an inflated sense of self as a result of studying Torah because he knows the fact that he understands Torah is not because of his own virtue or his own talents and his own ability. He understands Torah because that's how Hashem wants it. So when, the more you understand Torah, the, the, if you're studying Torah properly with the proper bitl, and like we said about Lifneim, Tassim Lifneim, it has to be revealing the Pneumius of the Neshama, which is through Pneumius HaTorah, it's through Moshe Rabbeinu. We, 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 we dealt with that, we're going to move past that, but, but, but the idea that, that it's done in that way, in Achsid Shanoifen, when a person studies Torah in that way, so then the result is what, what is, what does he feel when he studies Torah? The more he understands Torah, the more he recognizes that it's beyond him. The more he recognizes God in Torah, the more he finds the Ebishna in Torah. Is, that, is it the same thing like saying, because to me, it makes more sense to say the more you study Torah, the more you understand how great the Torah is, how great God is for making the Torah in such a way that we are able to understand it. Not so much that we, we nullify ourselves. No, because... Because if, if it's how great the Torah is, then again you have the problem. Why, why could I understand Torah? The greater it is, the less I should understand it. The more I understand it, 
the, the less great it becomes. So if I'm just an, looking at it from the Torah itself perspective, the more I understand Torah, the lower the Torah is. Okay. So, but but if but if you recognize that the Torah comes from Hashem, who's not limited to any of it, so then the Torah could be beyond intellect and in intellect at the same time. If it's without, it, it, it also yeah, it does make the Torah greater. Doesn't doesn't make the person greater. Adir Abba, you're right. The person becomes small. In other words, the the, the feeling that he gets, the more understanding he has in Torah, the more he feels God. That's what it should do, exactly. It has to humble the person more. That's what we finished here in chapter 6, right? Explaining this idea. That the fact that the person understands Torah is because, because of the because of the Ebersh. Okay, so, so now we have like this. Means that you have to teach the students in a way that they understand it thoroughly. And it has to become theirs. They have to acquire it. And since you're doing it with name, you're revealing the essence of the Nishama and who's doing it, Moshe Rabbeinu, right? That it's Moshe Rabbeinu who does it. So then becomes Kisikna, then they have that ability to recognize that the that the Torah is um, is Torah's, uh, is, is Torah like it's an Atzilus, it's Torah that's beyond human intellect. And that explains, the Rebbe says, that also explains the next thing, because j- stopping there, Kisikna, but Kisikna is the, only the beginning of the, the verse. The, the verse continues, Kisikna, what are you acquiring in Eved? You're getting a, you're acquiring a, 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 a servant, to use a more softer translation, right? A, a bondsman. So what's, what's the, um, so how, how does that fit? So that's the, that's the whole point. When you recognize Kisikna, that Torah is really beyond your intellect, it's Torah, it's an Atzilus, so then what's the result? The result is Eved. You become an Eved. It, 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 it causes more bittel, more, more humility, more surrender to Hashem, rather than more ego. And, and, and more sense of self, more self awareness. So that's the idea of Kisikna Evet. So that all works out. And remember, we asked the question about why, it's, why we, we asked in the beginning of the Maimer, one of the questions was why are we starting with Evet Ivri if the whole point is to emphasize Bittal, uh, surrender. So the ultimate form of surrender, of, 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 serv- of servitude, is an Evet Knaini, not an Evet Ivri. So we're, we're going to work towards that. Okay, so now chapter 7. Pisa, Yuvan Lashen Chazal, Ula Based on what we said now, that when we study Torah, and the more we understand Torah, the more we recognize that the Torah is Torah of the Eberstein, that's beyond, that it's a tzilos, and so therefore that, the, the, cause, the result of that is more bitl, more servitude and surrender to Hashem. So now we can understand what Chazal say. The Medrash says, Ulo shal Torah. Yeah, it says, Hekim ol. Pasuk says, so the Medrash uh, interprets it, that it means oil of Torah. The oil, right? We know it's a famous term, oil the Ula Shal Torah and Ula Shal Mitzvahs, you have upon yourself the yoke of Torah and the yoke of Mitzvahs. So when we talk about the yoke of Mitzvahs, that would make sense, right? I have a bunch of things I have to do. When I do Mitzvahs, I serve Hashem as a servant serving his master. So that's the idea of a yoke. What's a, what's a yoke? You put a yoke on an animal because the animal wants to go graze. You put a yoke on the animal and that compels the animal to uh, plow a field, to work hard, right? The yoke uh, overrides the animal's own interests, right? And compels the animal to do what it wants. So when we're talking about mitzvahs, fine. I'd like to do one thing. Hashem wants me to do another thing. The yoke of mitzvahs means I do what Hashem wants. But if we're talking about Torah, Torah is all about understanding. It's all about your intellect. It's all about your involvement, your engagement in Torah, your, your enthusiasm in studying Torah. Like we know, right, like a person should study Torah. You have, to, you have to be into it. You have to be excited about it. You have to enjoy it. You have to use your mind. So how does the term, the yoke of Torah, apply? It seems to be an oxymoron. If it's the yoke, then it's not Torah. If it's Torah, there can't be a yoke, right? So what, how, what is the term then? What's the meaning of this term by Chazal? Ula shal Torah. Since Torah is not that a person surrenders. You don't start studying Torah and say, I believe with Amun HaShleim, with complete faith, that what the Torah says is true. You have to understand it. You have to understand it with your own mind. And to the extent that not only do you have to just, that you have to seek to understand what the Torah says, but even the conclusion, even the Psak Din, the determination, what is it the Torah wants of me, I have to come to that understanding based on my understanding. I have to come to that conclusion based on my understanding. Right? The Torah, Leib 
Torah is not in heaven. Right? With the, we quoted last time, I think the Gemara, where the, the machlek is between Rabbi Lazar and the Chachamim about a certain din, about an oven, whether it's susceptible to, to uh, tumma, to impurity. And, we say, and, and Rabbi Lazar said one thing, and the Baskal came out and said that the Allah is like him. And the Chachamim said, sorry, Eimash Gichim Bebaskal. The Torah is Leib Hashemayim. We don't listen to what the, what, what's coming from heaven. We have to make a determination on our own. And we, down here, object to, what the, to how you're learning it up there in heaven. Meaning, that, that Chayra, fine, we have to understand something, but in a, in a situation <laughs> like that, where suddenly there's a heavenly voice that says, this is how I think the halach is, so you say, okay, so we submit, we humbly surrender to your, your judgment. No, the Chacham didn't do that. They said, sorry, we reject it. We don't understand it that way. We understand that the conclusion should be X, and so therefore that's the conclusion. And what does Hashem say? Nitzchuni, you, you defeated me, you're right. So if so, so now when you're in Ula what, what is the meaning of Ula Shaltaira, the yoke of Taira, the oil in Yina Bittu? A yoke is, is Bittu, right? Surrender is, is overriding the person's own agenda and, and interests. So the explanation is like we explained already. When a person knows and feels, senses that Taira is really Taira Savaya, meaning that it's Taira Natsilis, right? It's a Kenyan. And the fact that the Torah was given to man to, to render judgment and to understand to the fact that man has the authority over Torah be, uh, even more so than what's in heaven. Why does a person have, why is a person granted this authority only because Hashem is a kol yachol because he could do everything and anything. And so therefore it's only God who can do anything that can take Torah as it's his Torah and give it to, to man. So if so, what comes out? That even when a person understands Torah, what does he feel? The yoke of Torah. Meaning, that the Torah is his master. And he's surrendered, submitted to Torah, just like a, a servant is, is surrendered to his master. What does this mean? Huh? So let's, let's finish the last line here. So, so the fact that the Torah is given to man, the fact that he has the authority, the person never, because that's the will of the, of the master, the one who gives the Torah. In other words, the Yid that learns Torah never loses sight of the fact that the fact that he even is given the authority to render decisions in Torah, to make a, a determination that heaven then is bound to, the, the, the Psak Din down here in this world by, by, uh, by a human being, he recognized that that authority is not his own. It's only something that was given to him by the Adam, by the Master, by God. So therefore, he can, on, at one hand, on one hand, he could render judgment, and on the other hand, be completely submitted to the Torah itself. So that's the meaning of the yoke of Torah, right? So seemingly, the yoke of Torah means you, 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 you follow whatever the Torah says, you're bound by Torah. Yeah, right? What's, yoke, the simple meaning of oil of, of Torah, the yoke of Torah means... That the Torah says something, I have to believe it. I, I don't really understand it. It doesn't really resonate with me. I don't see it that way. Okay, but it's the yoke of Torah. If that's what Torah says, then that probably makes sense. It's probably the truth. And I just, I just have to follow along. That's, that's the seeming meaning of the yoke of Torah. But the Rebbe says that's not Torah. To accept it with, a, with, with, with faith is not, is not Torah. Torah is intellect. You have to understand it. So what's the pshat now? What's he explaining? What's the meaning of the yoke of Torah when a yid studies Torah and recognizes that the fact that he's granted authority over Torah is only because it's granted to him by the other? And he essentially is, is lower than that. The fact that he has it is only because of the Abish that could do the impossible. So then he, is, he, he can be submitted to the Torah at the same time. He senses that the Torah is really beyond him. So you have these two, these two dual it's not a complete feelings. Can I get, Hashem gave, gave permission for this. He gives me shoes for you to understand it. Yeah. He wants you to understand. Not he, he, it's like a, a, on Shluchis. So the Rebbe, the Rebbe wanted Shluchim to use their own, to know the reason also their own talents and skills, be, right? Their own determination. Be you're you're on site. Right? You're on site. And so you have to make a call based on what's going on there because you're the one on site. I, you're a shliach. You're a shliach. You want to do what the Rebbe wants. I don't want to do what you want. But that's the whole point. It's when you're. You take it this way or the other. Either he knew the Rebbe, that's why it's a Zion, Zion, yes, it's the key. No more, no, he knew the Rebbe more. Or, the opposite, you know, exactly. the Rebbe is, yeah, the Rebbe is different. So. But, but here's the point. You could, you could, you could, he, 
So you could, so a shliach, on the one hand, you say, I'm just going to do what the Rebbe tells me to do. That's what I'm here to do. I'm, I'm here to follow, to do what, he, what I'm told. I'm a soldier. I do as I'm told. And the Rebbe said, no, you have to be a soldier on the one hand, but on the other hand, you have to do as you understand it. So how, is this a contradiction? So you're a shliach or you're not a shliach? Are you autonomous? So the whole point is that even doing what you know that, you, that, that you're doing the way you understand is because that's what you're told to do. So why are you doing it? Because I'm a soldier. <laughs> Right? Oh, so, so what's, but it's not just al das. It's not just I'm going to do and hope to be mechav and to the rest On the contrary, the fact that you're doing the way you understand it is only become a soil. On the one hand, and so, true. And you're going to be mechav and you're going to talk, you'll reach the right conclusion. No question. If you're doing it with the proper middle. But the point is, on the one hand, you can use your own in- intellect, your own instincts, right? Your own, your own assessment of it. And at the same time, why, why are you doing it? What do you feel when you're doing it? You feel that you're being mechaim, the rats and you're doing the Ratzana Mashallah. Even if not what they have to do. To, that, exactly, that's exactly the point. Exactly. If I change them, it's the other change. Right. So the point is here that when you're studying Torah, Yid studies Torah, even when he paskins and he says, in the Shemaim, they're saying one way. I think a different way. Right? Even so, that's still Bittal. Still Bittal to Shemaim, still Bittal to the Abish, because you recognize that the, the, the authority that you're given to Torah comes from the Abish there, and who can do the impossible. Okay. So Vyash Lakash is a Zesh Amr Azal, Al Pasak Vela Mishpatim, the Ela Moisif Al Rishonim. So the Rebbe says we can connect. Yeah, the Rebbe says we can connect this to the Maimer Chazal on the pasuk Ve'elam Mishpatim. The pasuk starts Ve'elam Mishpatim. The parsha of Mishpatim opens with a vav. A vav means that it connects to before, right? It's, it, it should say Ela Mishpatim. It's a new thing. So why say Ve'ela and? Why do we start open a, a new parsha with and? So the so Chazal say because just as the original ones, we're coming parsha Mishpatim is a continuation. It's the next. Parsha right after Matan Torah. So he says, just as the Ten Commandments we heard in Mount Sinai, they come from Sinai. So the same tr- thing is true here. Not even though now we're going through a bunch of le- uh, you know technical and legal and rational and moral laws, all of these also come from Sinai. So it's not like Moshe says, I'm going to give you the the mitzvahs that you got from our Sinai, and now let's set up a civil society on our own. No, the Eila Hamishpatim. This is a continuation of Sinai. All of these things all come from Sinai as well. Right? This, the ve'ela means that this is in addition. We started talking about, about, about Sinai, and this is a continuation of Sinai. That just as the, orig- the first ones are from Sinai, so too these are also from Sinai. What does this mean? Why, why is, in other words, why is it that here when we start Parshas and Mishpatim, we're connecting these laws specifically? Obviously, it applies to all laws of Torah. Everything from Torah comes from our Sinai. But why specifically here are we connecting this? You know, drawing that connection to Har Sinai. So he says like this. Because Shakayah al Khibr Dishna Afkim Shaba Shabi Mishpatim Shay Muvan Besekh of Alimit Shalem Sarah Lias but if in the Ash Tasam if Nayam, Tam Yash Talmudum, Shay Dez and Asatar Tirasishala Adam Alaimit. I'm sorry, let, I'm sorry, let me let me go back a second. I misspoke. I jumped the, I jumped ahead. What, what what's the meaning to say here that when we're starting to say Mishpatim that these are also from Sinai. What's the point that these are also from Har Sinai? What's the emphasis? Elumi Sinai. They come from Sinai. What's the what, what what's he trying to say? So he says like this: that now that we're talking about mitzvahs that are mishpatim, meaning that she muvan and we can understand them rationally. Valimut shalahem and and learning these laws, the mishpatim, the rational laws. Certainly, is but even dasher tassim lifnei have to be in a way that you understand them thoroughly. Tamam yashav talmudam in a way that you understand it very well. Shaydeis and nasa tayra tayra sejal demalim to the extent that the tayra becomes the person's tayra. So that's the first thing we're saying about mishpatim. The first is that you have to know them and understand them thoroughly to the point that they become yours and at the same time they also have to study in a way of kisikna that you also have to have this uh, the dual feeling and awareness that Torah is not yours but it's kisikna it's Torah as it's an atzilus the Abish is Torah beyond your intellect and even more than that is beyond Tosim with name and Kisikner also has to be the union of Eved, which is Ula Shal Torah, as we said, we just said in the beginning of the paragraph. Ula Shal Torah, meaning the yoke of Torah that you, that in other words, that you feel even while you're learning Torah, and even while you understand Torah, and even while you recognize that Torah is beyond beyond its inatzilus. The the resultant uh, feeling has to be Ula Shal Torah, the yoke of Torah, total submission to Torah. So all of this is Nita Misina. All of this comes from Sinai. Shegam boy who chibur dishne why is it that here specifically we have this idea that, eight, that the Chazal tells that Elunit, also these come from Sinai? Because by Har Sinai we also have the connection of these two things. Because we're talking about two extremes. On the one hand, understand it thoroughly using every last bit of your intellect. On the other hand, we're saying total bittel, right? It's, it's totally beyond. 
two opposites that are coming together. Same is true with Har Sinai. Because by Har Sinai we have the combination of these two opposites, Mitzius Ubitl. You have Mitzius, right? Your own existence, and at the same time, Bittl. You see, Bittl, we, we, we talked talk about this in a previous memory as well. The idea of Bittl is the opposite of Mitzius, right? Bittl doesn't mean, Bittl doesn't mean that you are nothing, that you're worthless, that you're a loser. That's it. Sometimes that, that's commonly how people understand it, but it's but it's incorrect. Not, not only is it incorrect, but it's actually the exact opposite of what Bittl is, because what Bittl means, Bittl means that it's not about me. Bittel means that it's not about it's not about me. It's about the Abishter. So what does it mean that a person's bottled to the Abishter? You have you have you submit to the Abishter. Not that you're nothing. If you're nothing, then it's still about you. Where's the Abishter come in? So I'm something, I'm nothing, I'm more, I'm less. So you're all you're you're only consumed with yourself. Bittel's not has nothing to do with you. Bittel means that there's an Abishter. <laughs> that's the reality. That's real, and that's that's what occupies my mind. That, that's what gets my attention. The Abishter, God. So on the one hand, we're saying bitl, meaning uh, not you. On the other hand, there's mitzis. What's mitzis mean? I, I, if, I under, if, if it's just the Abish, there's a, what, whether I understand or not, is totally irrelevant. And yet we're saying you need to understand. So you can't escape your own existence. You need to use. And, and, and two people sit together and study Torah, and one will understand one way, one will understand the other way. Why? If it's the Abish, it's Torah, if it's total bitl, so how can we understand differently? Because, because of our Metzius. My neshama comes from one place, your neshama comes from another place. It already relates to the way we see everything. So it relates to our existence. So how could you have on the one hand, total, not about your existence, it's about the Abish there, and on the other hand, use your own existence as well. So that's what we're talking about here, right? So he said, we find the same thing by Har Sinai. Right? Because by Har Sinai, but look at the Torah, it's explained in the Torah, the Zesh, the Torah, the Har Sinai, the Mach, the Mechol Torah, the Mechol Torah, the Har Sinai, the Har Sinai, the Har the Gemara says, and the Medrash talks about why was the Torah given on Har Sinai, right? The Gemara in Saita. Why is it on Har Sinai? The Machik Mikal Torah, because Har Sinai was the lowest of all mountains. So, which which teaches what? Bittul, right? Humility. So, if we want to teach humility, so then give it in a valley. <laughs> You're giving it on a mountain that's lower than all the other mountains. What's the point? Give it in a valley where there's total nothingness, right? So he says, no, it's 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 Machik, it's low, Mikal Torah from all mountains, but but it's of the mountain. So why? So because in Har Sinai we have also these two these two uh, um, feelings, right? These two different uh, attitudes. You have on the one hand or senses. You have on the one hand you have Har it's Hagba it's it's picking yourself up, and on the other hand it's Machich it's low it's Bittel. So you have these two things. Pashat Pshat and Machich is that uh, that it's the lowest of all mountains, meaning that you have to have a little. There's a little ego. You have, some, uh, you have ego, but a little bit of ego. Not total surrender, right? al like it says, also in the Gemara and Seit, I think, right? That Echad Shmeinim Shminis, right? You have to have an eighth of an uh, eighth of a... Uh, you have to have a little bit of arrogance. Shminis Shab Shminis. Right? You have to have a little bit of... So, seemingly, what's, what's the hard scene I teaches us, simply, that you have to have a little bit of gaiva. But we know that that's not the case. There's no such thing as a little bit of that That Gemara, Shminis Shminis Shminis, is a... <laughs> There's a ra- raging machlekes about it. There's the a whole thing about exactly what that. That's a very complicated, very controversial topic in its own right. But here, Chassidus Taich is not not that Har Sinai means a little bit of gaiva. It means they're two separate things. There's there's bittel, complete bittel, all, exclusively bittel, and also exclusively hagba. <laughs> picking yourself up. So it's not a little bit of picking yourself up. It's two dip, two different, two polar opposite. Uh, 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 feelings that a person has to have. On the one hand, is total surrender, complete total surrender. There's no arrogance. On the other hand, there also has to be Hagba. There also, also has to be Mitzvahs. How do we get? So, so we see that here the same. So that's what we're saying here. That when, since we're talking about Torah and we're talking about, on the one hand, you have to understand it thoroughly, and on the other hand, it has to be complete. It has to be a yoke. It has to be complete bittul. So where do we? So that's where the Chazal tell us. These two, these two come from Ar Sinai. These two come from Ar Sinai. Just as by Ar Sinai, what was the experience? Two extremes together. So the same as here, when we study Torah, we have to have these two extremes. Okay, let's take a look at the footnotes here. Yeah, note forty nine. We said forty nine first. Yeah. So we said that we're talking about here that by mishpatim it has to be limud has to be in a way that that um, the, the limud of what of shalahem of mishpatim. That these rational laws has to be in a way that you understand it. Yes, he says like this. So we say. So inside the Maimir is saying that that we're here. We're talking about the Maimir about mishpatim specifically. 
Parshas and Mishpatim, we're talking about rational laws. Right? And we have to understand these rational laws in a way of understanding. So the Rebbe notes in 49 that the Adin, the Tzarek, this idea, when we say that you have to teach, a teacher has to teach his students in a way that they understand it thoroughly, understand the reason behind them, Yashul, they understand even the reasons, this is true, Becholdin HaTayra. It's said over here by Mishpatim Taka, but it really applies to all of the Torah, even to the laws that are not understood. Ella, Shabachokim, Tamam Yashul, Tamudim, Muhammad, Dadinim. It says the difference is like this. Here, it says it here by Mishpat because it tells us the extent to which we have to understand it. Really, this law that a teacher has to teach his students in a way they understand the reason behind the laws applies to all mitzvahs of Torah. We know you have the mitzvahs, you understand the mitzvahs, we don't understand the non-rational commandments. Even the non-rational commandments have to be studied in a way that we understand the reason behind it. But what does it mean? We don't, there is no reason. Right? So what does it mean to understand the reason? So there what it means is you understand the source, where it comes from in the Torah, how you can learn one, from the, one thing from another. Right? So you have a halacha that's not rational. You have to know. I learn it. There are ways that I learn it. So I have to know the reasoning behind it. Not just the bottom line conclusion, but the methodology to which we, how we arrived to there. Even though the reason of the thing itself, the mitzvah itself, is beyond my understanding. Like what? Like, like, yeah. Like what? Yeah. That's right. right. You have to know right. exactly. Correct. Very no, good example. Yeah. Correct. 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 But but by mishpatim, on the other hand, it's, it goes beyond that. It goes a step further. That's why we're emphasizing it here. That it's not just you have to understand the methodology and rec- uh, understand the source and where it comes from and how you get to that the conclusion. But you have to understand the reason of it itself as well. The, the reason behind it in itself. Note fifty. He said that the person has to study Torah in a way of Ulush that that was also Nitan Misinai, comes from our Sinai. So he says like this, note 50. Masha Amra Misinai. So the fact that he says also the, the, the first ones are from Sinai. In other words, now that we're saying, we say the, the Chazal, the Maimar Chazal is Maha Rishonim Misinai Af El Misinai. Just as the first ones come from our Sinai, so too these come from Sinai, meaning that we're compa- comparing them. Well, note 49, we just said that they're different. Right? That we, yes, we have to understand even Chukim, but we understand them differently. That understanding doesn't, that it doesn't extend all the way, right? And here we're saying the same. Just as the first ones are from our Sinai, so to these. But if they're different, how do you, how do you connect the two? Yeah? So that's seemingly the question here. So he says like this. Because even when we talk about Chukim, even the non-rational laws, the super-rational laws, even they have to be understood. Even the, the, the din, in fact, the Nitzchun Abad Nitzchun is actually talking about a din of Tum and Tara. It's talking about non-rational laws. And how they understood it the way they understood it, right? So it's not just that, that you have to understand the halacha and understand your own intellect, even by chukim, but that's limited to, to just to, the, to the, the actual din. He says, furthermore, Shagama chukim is bahem. This is a quote from the Rambam, which we, we, we quoted in a previous memory as well. Right, that he says that the Rambam says the end of Hilchos Tumura. He says that 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 even when it comes to the non-rational mitzvahs, it's appropriate for a person to contemplate them, to think about them. And whatever reason you can ascribe to it and 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 and, uh, and deduce from it, you should do that. So, in other words, we should seek to rationalize, in a sense, even the non-rational mitzvahs. Now, obviously, well, people do, and and people, do, and we're supposed to. Oh, good. So, yeah, so that, look, even though we talk about the mentioned kosher, right? See, even with kosher, there, there's, there's a certain rationalization that comes to kosher, even self discipline, the reasons. Now, why dafka these things? Or we talk about the, 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 the simonim, right? The Rebbe talks about the simonim. What's the lesson you can learn from the signs of kosher? So, even though the signs of kosher are chayk, they're beyond, but still, is bainavim, the kolash, yachalit and lem tam, ten lay tam. If I can learn something from the, from the, the split hooves and chewing its god, then I have to learn it from it. So, I under, so I'm rationalizing in a sense. It's just that thorough, proper understanding is only by the Mishpatim. It's not by the Chokim. By Chokim, we're sort of applying it, describing a certain meaning, even though we know that it remains beyond it. By Mishpatim, that's where you have that, that thorough understanding. Okay, so the point is that we see, though, these, the two points here from 49 and 50. On the one hand, he's saying that, um, that, that 
that it applies, that this idea of ashatasim of name, understanding it thoroughly, that it becomes one, applies even to chukim, which seemingly be a lie beyond a person's capacity to, to make his own. So we say, no, even that has to be your own. You have to, they have to make your own, you have to understand it thoroughly. So then he says, that takes the next step in 50, that not only does that apply to the rationale behind the law, or the, 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 the source, how we deduce the law, how we arrive to that conclusion, but even understanding the reason itself. Okay. So vihine. Razal, how are we doing on time? Are we okay? Yeah. Okay. So Godl Talmud Shemel Day Maisa, chapter eight. So Chazal say that Talmud great is the Talmud study Shemel Day Maisa brings to action. Right? The Gemara in um, the end of Kedushin that talks about the debates. This thing, what's greater, doing Maisa mitzvahs or study? And the Gemara end concludes that Talmud is greater because Talmud leads to Maisa. Which okay, that itself is a whole nother parsha. So then, what's greater? If the whole greatness of Talmud is that brings the Maisa, so that, okay, so we'll leave that for, let's leave it for another time. Okay, but the point is like this. So Chazal say, God Talmud should the Maisa. Talmud is great, study is great because it brings to Maisa. So through this com- c- combining these two extremes, these two opposites, which is Mitzias on the one hand, your understanding, right, your intellect, and Bittel, total submission. In studying Torah, so nimshach al derech zeh gam b'maisa mitzvahs. The same thing happens in mitzvahs. You bring about these two, you, you, the coexistence of the not just the coexistence, but the complementing these two polar opposites that complement each other. Just as we find them in Torah, we also can find the same thing that God Talmud Shem Mevi Lidei Maisa. What the Rebbe is interpreting here to mean that Talmud is great. Talmud brings this coexistence, this this making of the impossible. The Metzius and Bittel, these two extremes, brings them together. So Talmud brings that into Maisa, brings it from the study into the action as well. How so? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what's the difference? So he says like this: It's just that when when we're studying Torah, what's the? In other words, we have two things. We have on the one hand, we have Metzius, your existence, your intellect, your personality, right, your experience. On the other hand, you have total submission. So there's Metzius, there's Bittel. So when a person studies Torah, what's the Chiddush? A person studies Torah, seemingly what it means to study Torah, you have to understand it. The, the, the seeming, the obvious thing is that you have to apply your mitzvahs, you have to bring yourself into it, right? So who's, who's studying Torah? You, the person. What's the chiddush that we're saying? The, the novelty is that even though you have to study Torah, you have to understand, you have to use your own, your, own, your own intellect, your own intelligence. Nevertheless, what are we telling you? That has to also be bittel. So the chiddush here is bittel. What's by maisa? By action. By action is the opposite. When, I, when I'm serving Hashem, I'm doing what Hashem wants. So what's the, what's the primary function here? Servitude, right? I want one thing, God wants another thing, I do what Hashem wants, submission to Hashem. So when you do a mitzvah, what's the, what's the, what seems to be the primary motivator, the primary instinct is bittel, right? And yet we're saying now, we're going to say that Talmud brings the two together. So by mitz, by Torah, seemingly the, 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 what, what operates is your mitzvah. By mitzvah, you have the opposite, you have bittel. Right? And now we're said, we just explained that no, by, even by learning Torah, you have to have bittel. And now we're saying the same is true by mitzvahs. By mitzvahs, you also have the two extremes. You have the bittel and mitzvahs. So he says like this. So by, by limudat Torah, chiddush or bittel. By limudat Torah, what's the chiddush? What's the, what, what seems to be the new, the novelty when it comes to studying Torah is that we're told that it has to be with bittel. Right? Which seems to run counter to the way you're supposed to study. That even though studying Torah means understanding that's mitzvahs, nevertheless, the study has to be with bittel, with submission. By mitzvahs, it's the opposite. What's the chiddush? Your mitzvahs. Why? Right? We always talk about mitzvahs, as a connection. But you can't escape the fact that mitzvahs also command. Tzavah ben Hazel means a commandment. That's the literal meaning. A mitzvah is a command from Hashem. When you have a commandment, why, do we, why are we always uncomfortable with interpretation? Because it means, what do I mean? <laughs> why should I listen to God, right? I don't want to do something with somebody else. I don't want to be obedient, right? But that's the whole point. That's exactly what you're supposed to be. When you do mitzvahs, the, oper- the, the, the primary thing is here, commandment of Hashem. You're following orders. Like a servant. But nevertheless, what's the chiddush here is that when you learn, when you do mitzvahs, even though the main thing here is that you do it obediently, the Abish is commanding. There's a command from God, and you follow the commands, you follow orders, do as you're told. Nevertheless, it has to be in a way that it doesn't override and negate your own your own existence, but on the contrary, 
that it has to be with your existence as well. Hainu. It's not just that you're compelled. God wants me to do it, I have to do it. It's just, it's the opposite. That when a person is submitted to Hashem, when a person fulfills mitzvahs, he does, it, he does attack obediently, but it has to also be with mitzvahs. There also has to be, that it, that's his passion, that's his enthusiasm. The Adrab, the Zokman. But the point is that, that, um, that here we have this, I think we're out of time, but this is the we go back to the analogy from, from Shluchis, the Rebbe would send Shluchim, right? So people would sign. It took a while, but eventually people would sign up. People would line up. To, they want to go on Shluchis. Why? Because they recognize to them the greatest thing was to do what the Rebbe wants. That they, that, so the, the, what was the, the operative thing? Here's Bittel. I'm a chassid. I'm a soldier. Bittel. So what motivated somebody to want to go on, on Shluchis? To be Bittel. Bittel to the Rebbe. Not his Metzius. And yet we said... Remember, we said before, the Rebbe would say, you have to determine on your own, right? Even though you're a bottle, you're, you're a soldier. On the other hand, you have to make your own call. You have to use your own intellect, your own talents, your own abilities. And the same thing, the Rebbe would always, always, the Rebbe would, it certainly happened, that, and, and maybe you could say always, the Rebbe would expect that the shliach would go on shlichus happily. He, wasn't, he didn't want anybody to feel forced into it. You weren't compelled to go. So on the one hand, you lined up to go... I'm going to go as I'm told, do, do as I'm following orders. On the other hand, from the Rebbe's perspective, he says, no, it has to be besimcho to live up, it has to be joy, you have to have an enthusiasm in this. Nobody's forcing anybody to do anything. You have to, it has to be your experience, you have to want it. The Rebbe spoke about shliach and mashiach and simcha, connected all those things, the idea of simcha, it has to be joy. I, if, if you're a servant, so what kind of joy is there? Generally, a, a, a servant, it's a sort of, it's joyless. You're obedient, so even though you, you agree to be obedient, you consent to it, you want it, but what's the, where's the enthusiasm in it? They never wanted to know. There has to be enthusiasm. So he expects this idea, this idea of the two opposites that come together, two extremes. On the one hand, Bittal, on the other hand, Metzius. So when we're studying Torah, the Chiddush is the Bittal. When we talk about Mitzvahs, the Chiddush is the Metzius. But in both instances, you have to have both. And that's the meaning of Gadol, Talmud, Shemavi, Lidei, Maisa, that when we take this from Talmud, that we talk about Tassim Lifneim, that it's Moshe and Primisa Torah, and all these different things that take us to the point that, we could, that enables a person to study Torah, and on the, other one, on the one hand, it becomes his, and on the other hand, it's total Bittal. From that, that spills over into his observance of mitzvahs. That even though mitzvah is primarily done with Avdus, with Sabisha Tashem Bittal, nevertheless, there also he brings into it his mitzvahs, his enthusiasm, his passion, his excitement, as we will, Mitzvah continue to discuss.